Me say Joy Christopher, protect the righteous with wisdom and strength. For the for those of the audience who are either building companies, have companies, you know, one day want to have a company, I just want to understand how these legal issues are handled within organizations because they may be entangled in something at some point in time. So how have large media companies traditionally responded to claims we just you discussed earlier, you know, uh, trademark infringement, copyright infringement, and what factors do they customarily consider before officially responding, right? Because we know sometimes, you know, you don't even hear of a claim because it's going to be bad press. So they just kind of put it under the rug. They may be taking things to arbitration and getting things sealed. So, so I don't know, either one you could talk to this, like how is that stuff traditionally managed inside a big organization that has a lot to lose? Well, I can speak to some of the, the typical issues that we have at a company like Lionsgate. You know, we own a lot of intellectual property and a lot of the claims, you know, you'll get regular slip and falls and sexual harassment claims and things like that. But the bulk of what our business is, is uh, selling and licensing and acquiring uh, intellectual property. So a lot of the claims, they become, you know, none of it is rote, but they do get to be a little bit predictable. You know what types of claims you're going to get. You put out a movie that's successful. Part of the downside of having a successful movie is that people are going to come out of the woodworks and say, oh, you got a vampire movie? Check out this script I wrote when I was 12 on, <laughs> on vampires. Um, and some of those claims... Uh, they all have the same elements, so you start to assess them according to uh, not quite a checklist, but you got a little decision tree. Uh, is there any merit to it whatsoever? Like, do we do we know right off the bat just based on the timing? Like, we know when we wrote our script, and you're saying your script was written 40 years later. We got you dead. We got you dead in the water. Now the question is, do we write you a letter uh, memorializing that that could end up on the internet? Mm -hmm and giving you the attention that maybe it's the attention that you wanted in the first place, or do we just ignore it and hope it dies on the vine, running the risk that this person might might rush to the courthouse and try to uh, get a declaratory relief action against you or something like that. So we you know we go through the whole, the whole gamut. I mean, cost is obviously a big issue, whether or not we want to do business with this person in the future. Um, you know, if, if someone's got a valid claim, uh, you know, we want to know that too. You know, we want to be honest about it. And, you know, the thing is, we, you know, we were kind of talking a little bit off, off mic about how uh creative people always think that their idea was original they think of you know, course and there's not that many different ideas under the sun of course and it's very rare in these in this space that someone is actually stealing from you that someone's actually just copying your idea um did you put it up on the internet was it possible that somebody stumbled across your youtube video and was in, suddenly inspired and then went off to rip off this you know this this three this this movie trilogy that made over a billion dollars all because of your YouTube video, or is it just as likely that they came up with the idea that you think is so great on their own? Um, you know, you want to think about that. You want to think about the publicity. Um, one of the things I've learned, uh, and one of the things I was told and taught when I first came in house versus being inside of a law firm was that, um, you know, they're like you got you write good letters, but you write lawyer letters. You got to start writing business letters. Like even if they're dead to rights wrong, we might be doing business with them next month well we gotta pull up on that hold on that's an important factor even though i'm just gonna just want to amplify this and you can jump right back in even though you're in a situation where you may be at an adverse you may be in an adversarial adversarial situation with with an outsider and as you engage them to figure out this issue you you've been instructed or the advice the general conventional advice is don't create a document that's going to ratchet up the tension and make it more adversarial Tem temper that language that that messaging so that there's room for a relationship afterwards yeah yeah don't burn down the house i mean that's what i was kind of known for was was pulling out the flamethrower and just letting everybody have it and uh you know when you're in house especially you know it doesn't matter how heated it gets if we can make money on a deal two months from now they'll make money in a deal and i was like well i'm yeah. glad you guys told me that because i was about to go get them um, but the, the, you know, the better bet is to try to maintain a business, you know, cordial business relationship, get your issues out, you know, advocate for your position and then call Lawrence when it's time to start breathing fire. Like the caller your own say, man, it's, it's only business.